Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, an inspired conversation space between Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner on the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We keep our conversations honest, our experiences real and our philosophies exploratory. We believe that in order to raise incredible humans, we first have to raise ourselves. We know that in order to rock the family, you've got to nourish the mother. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively, head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And for all live streamed pre-release podcasts and all our free content, head over to our free Facebook group, Nourishing the Mother with Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is Bridget and Julie's top three tips for when you're exhausted. I don't know a mother who is not exhausted. Mm. Like I don't know that that exists as like at some point you'll be, you'll live so simply or you'll be so high vibing that exhaustion will no longer be part of your experience. Mm. It's, a bit of like, it's a bit of a like elusive unicorn, isn't it? And and yet we can strive for it, can't we? Like we can be, we can think that it's possible to somehow get to some age that our children reach where we won't, you know, feel depleted and feel exhausted. And yeah, I think the longer that you parent, the more you go, ah, oh, yeah, I might be out of the newborn stage, but there's a different tiredness here. There's a different overwhelm here. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's also the relentlessness mm-hmm. of this task, right? Is there is no holidays, there is no time off, whether you feel like it or not, whether you're sick or not, whether you're sleeping or not, you don't have a choice. You yeah. gotta show up. There's no one else. There's no exit stage left. So I do think that first off, we just need to let go of the illusion that at some point you won't be exhausted. Mm. And I don't think it matters whether you're a full-time stay-at-home mum or whether you are balancing part-time work and parenting or Mm. whether you're a full-time working mum who also then comes home and balances life and family. I don't think it matters which you choose. They're all exhausting. Mm. I love that acknowledgement because I think in that there's like a breath of like relief. Even though it's part of you that doesn't want that to be true, there's also an acknowledgement of where you find yourself. Yeah. I know mums across all of those iterations. I myself have experienced every single one of those iterations. Mm. Exhaustion's still there. Yeah. In fact, I was sitting, having my nails done a little while back and this beautiful woman I was sitting in front of, you know, having a conversation and I must have caught her on a day when she was really exhausted and having one of those days, you know, that we all get in that veneer cracks a little. Yeah, you're getting, you're a bit weepy. You're a bit weepy, yeah. So, of course, she's sitting in front of me. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Like, of course, on the day that you have that, you're going to be sitting in front of me. And so I just, you know, really gently, because I don't know her and there's a cultural divide that I think she doesn't want to, you know, open up so fully and totally. And we just had really, really, really gentle, gentle conversations. And then at one point she just looked at me and, you know, just that look on her mum's face where you can feel that part of her heart that's breaking, Mm. that she can't seem to meet the thing that she expects herself to meet. And she's so exhausted and it doesn't matter which way she steps, it's all wrong. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. My heart just broke for her and she just looked at me and said, I'm so exhausted. Mm. and she looks at me she goes are you exhausted and I was like yeah I'm exhausted too she's like are you I'm like yeah (laughs) (laughs) I think we're all exhausted (laughs) 
And you know how I know that is because there's mums that I have had so many conversations with over this last six months going, God, I just like a seven day lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to get better. <laughs> better than that, better than a seven day lockdown is can I please get COVID and no one else <laughs> in my family so that I have to go into my bedroom on my own, be completely <laughs> And people bring me food to my door. Please, <laughs> I get COVID. I've seen people do that. I'm thinking oh, that would be pretty good. Like I, <laughs> something. I've even heard mums over the years. Oh God, can I just like break something that isn't going to really damage my life, but just gives me ten days in hospital? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like we're laughing about it. Oh God, it's true. But at the same time, how fucking hideous. Yeah. And the only way oh, God. would be to have a break <clears throat> or a rest or to restore or even acknowledge the bone deep fatigue that you have is to break something or be so sick you're in isolation. Yeah. It's pretty tragic, isn't it? I mean, and isn't this also like a symptom, I think, of modern motherhood, which has us on this like treadmill that just seems to be slowly getting faster but like not that you notice it it's like ever so gently and then all of a sudden you look around everybody else is running so fast too and you're all going but what are we doing this for but not enough people are asking what are we doing this for so instead we're all going fuck I'm so exhausted yeah me too okay see you um see you in a fortnight <laughs> see, see you at basketball next week I'm not even sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's full on. And yet, you know, I don't know that there's a way out of it either. Mm. Like a- I go, I'll be questioning the system, but then I go, it's not the system that's making me busy. It's my value on parenting. Well, but, and exactly. And this is the next thing, right? So that's it's part of, I'm still, yes, this might be like, what I'm seeing, um, you know, reflected to me because that's my values. Of course, society is is nothing but a projection of our own values. So I say this with tongue in cheek, knowing that I'm also choosing per- to perceive it to be so big and such an ask because I'm asking that of myself. Yes. Yeah. And so, could I ask something different of myself in the current iteration of my values? No. So therefore. How do I integrate this exhaustion? Right. Beautiful. Yeah. Love it. So with that segue, what are your three top go-tos and tips, Bridgie, for when you're exhausted? Would you like me to feed you them one by one? Yeah. Given that we just wrote them down and I've since forgotten what I said. I just went... Yeah, I know that brain that's like, what did I just say? <laughs> that exhaustion. Let me feed them to you. Yes, it yes. It also gets to be part of compassionate yeah. beingness when we're exhausted. <laughs> and, no, and the, whole, the whole thing about the baby brain, it doesn't just like know, it doesn't, doesn't go away once you know. baby. <laughs> and in fact, I was at the hairdresser this morning and we were talking about that. I'm like, oh God, you know, because she had this spaz and couldn't remember my um like her brain did like a conniption and she couldn't remember my husband's name. Now we've been friends for like years and years and years and years and years. And she's like, what is happening? I'm like, don't worry. I'm the last person you have to say that to. There's so many times I've rocked up with my best friend, whoever that I'm hanging with, and thought, I don't know your name to introduce you to the person that's just rocked up. <laughs> What is happening, brain? What is her name? I know her name. And your brain does not recall it, right? So I'm like, I get it. <laughs> and then the second that friend walks away, it's like you go, oh, God, Jenny, how do I not? <laughs> oh, God, how good laugh. Passionate too. All right, so Bridget's top three tips for when she's exhausted, which really means... I know that I'm actually, well, what I want just want to pin this with is what you just said in your sentence before, essentially, as I heard it, was I'm doing a reconciliation of my life and going, am I living in alignment? Mm, Because is my busy and my exhaustion also underneath all of that deeply fulfilling? Mm, Yeah, which is an important question to ask because it might actually be, it might actually be that, Oh gosh, because even like my son says, add another another extracurricular. I'm like, yeah, I really want that for you. And I'm exhausted at the idea of it. But I really want that for you. So how am I gonna do that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. Versus when I'm asked to take him somewhere to watch some friend who's 20 minutes away playing something, that's a no from me. Like my values say no to that. Yes. So I think that I can say no to that without any guilt, knowing all that I'm saying yes to. 
So I think like that, that like being really acutely aware of where my values are at and what feels and looks aligned to me right now means that I can choose that yes wholeheartedly and then also choose the no wholeheartedly too. Yeah. So one of my, you know, my first tip is essentially to know what's in alignment for you. Yeah. And if the exhaustion is to do with what you think you should be doing, then whose voice is in, that's in your head that has the message that you should be doing that? Because we, our nervous system is designed to close down and slow down and shut down when we're out of congruence. So it feels harder trying to push yourself into something that's not aligned. So your body's trying to give you feedback. Yes, mothering is exhausting and, ex- and we're going to feel exhausted, but there's like a point where it, I think it tips into like, wow, like it's constant, full on, I can't get a break from this. Mm. What's actually really out of alignment now then? Mm. So that's really worthwhile to ask yourself. Yeah. So this might end up being our top four tips. So okay. tip, tip number two for you, Bridget, is flip the script. Yeah. So flip the script is looking at, and this helped me a lot, and you and I did a podcast, um, I think when you, you had a toddler and I had a baby, and we were talking about tiredness. <clears throat> and because, you know, when you've got little, little people, it's just a way of life to be tired because you're waking up in the night, there's no sleeping through, and we can so easily make that kind of exhaustion our um you know, define us you can always be attached to whether our child sleeps through the night or not. And so we did like this podcast about like, you know, what are the benefits of sleep deprivation? You know, what's kind of an edge that I get, but where do I kind of get to build capacity or resilience here? Where does, you know, what does my, you know, exhaustion break down for me? Because sometimes for some of us, we can't access depths of intimacy unless we get so exhausted that all of our armory drops. Mm. So sometimes our exhaustion is actually a pathway to our vulnerability, to our intimacy, to our truth. But we don't get there unless we've, you know, it's a strategy, right? Like we, if we can't do it consciously, then we can do it in these kind of more unconscious ways. And that's beautiful too. Mm. Who, does, who do you allow to be let into your world or into your sphere when you get to that level of exhaustion mm. that you otherwise, you know, wouldn't. Love it. I just feel like that's such a fulfilling, even just I feel fulfilled hearing it. So it's mm. beautiful. Tip two was ask for help. Yeah. And this can be a really hard one because I think we all just want to do it all. Like we feel like oh, I can do it, I can manage it. And if I can't manage it, then it means I'm failing. So I'll just keep trying to do more. And so asking for help is a practice for me too, to actually go, oh, what if there could be more ease here by me asking my mum to come over or saying to a friend, can you watch my toddler for an hour so I can go to Pilates or I can, you know, have a nap if I'm completely wrecked. And then there's this beautiful reciprocity that comes about because of that too, because you've you've kind of opened up your world and kind of your vulnerability and said, oh, like I'm really struggling. Can can you help me here? And then it creates this beautiful like ecosystem of support. Mm-hmm. You know, we can also ask for more support from our partner. But what that requires of us is to value our work, to value the mothering in and of itself as being just like work that we also need a break from. Mm. It doesn't need to be us holding all of the time, us leading all of the time. And then babysitting their own children. Yeah. We just put that put that to bed. Like, really? <clears throat> oh, you know how great, like I was talking to a good friend of mine and she, her husband plays basketball with my husband and she often teaches when they play basketball so he like recently took the three kids to the basketball game like toddler two young school age kids brave right but she's like fuck this 
I've been taking them to like netball since forever and no one says, oh, what a great mum you are. Oh, look, you know, like you're just making it work. Whereas everyone's like, oh, gosh, he must be such a fantastic dad. Look at him. Like, you know, like people fawn over him doing this thing that, sh- that mums do day in, day out. So part of us reclaiming more energy is also asking ourselves, am I like over-functioning here? Is there some space that my partner or the other child's other caregiver can take up here so that I can lean back a little. Yeah. But there's an identity piece wrapped up in that for some women around can I let them? Yes. So yeah. there's a, sometimes a tension. But, to, but play with that. Like what would it be like for me to do here or over here what I really love that gives me energy and fuels my week ahead with my kids. It's possible for me if I let go of the hold I have here. Yes, yes, because in actual fact, the panacea to exhaustion isn't always doing less. Sometimes it's simply doing more of the thing that you love. Yeah, because it gives you energy. It's the source of your energy. The source of your energy is not necessarily into sleeping more. Yes, exactly. So having said that, your tip number three, which is now tip number four, yeah. is sleep and self-care yeah so certainly I can tell if I'm getting by on you know fumes and sometimes that will be because I'm not sleeping enough like I'm going to bed too late or I've had a couple of super early mornings so I will then go okay tonight I'm going to go to bed before 10 because I know that if I go to bed before 10 I'm likely to get a good seven to eight hours sleep and that's really restorative for me so I'm doing that And then I am upping all of like the food, like so even the other day, like I made a massive batch of um, bone broth and I just like had a bone broth fast for a day because I was like, I know I just want to replenish my body with fundamental basics and not even overload my digestion right now, like because that was feeling exhausting. And then, you know, up the magnesium, just whatever else feels like it's going to just be supporting the, the basics. Um, but yeah, I mean, sleep, I think we kind of can't hear that enough as you and I both said, like, I'm like, haven't we talked about sleep before? And you're like, yeah, but how often do we need the reminder? Because we can get stuck enjoying the sanctity of our own silence. Yeah. And I- <laughs> you become your own inner teenager that you're, you know, your own inner mother's going, you should go to bed. And your teenager's like, fuck you, I'm staying up. <laughs> definitely not thinking about the consequences no right (laughs) yeah I get it though I get that wrestle completely yeah this podcast is brought to you by the offers we currently have on in our world so over at bridgetwood.life you can find out more about the reimagining motherhood membership it's the place where conscious parenting and the whole woman collide to empower you in motherhood and you over at juliettenner.love is the online couples workshop experience it's 12 dates that you join from the comfort of your bedroom or lounge room cameras off guided by me over a 12 month experience so one date at the beginning of each month that inspires the support and the change that you can create in the rest of your month so it's a set it and forget it healthcare system for your relationship you can find out more at juliettenner.love And what about your three tips, Jules? So step number one for me is to invest in finding why I'm so exhausted because I often see that this is the part that mums don't do. So, you know, a mum will fall over because she's slipped on a kid's train on the floor and have an enormous bruise and she's limping for three weeks but won't have gone to see anyone. Or she accepts that the baseline of her total exhaustion is her normal and that it is normal yeah, and won't go and see anyone. Or like me with my prolapse, well, there's so much shame, I just won't go and see anyone and I'll just keep dealing. Mm. Or my digestion that's hideous and I have to run to the toilet or I'm so constipated I'm in pain or I'm bloated but I won't go and see anyone. Yeah. For some reason, well, I mean, we know the reasons, a lot of reasons, but women continuously, mothers continuously do not prioritise the investment in their own healthcare. Mm. And when we talk about, you know, with yours beautifully, Bridgie, asking for help and putting support structures around you, for me that is physical support structures for your physical body that you do not have all of the expertise on. Yeah. 
And neither is it just your body. You should know how to fix it. No, you shouldn't. Mm. It's a complex system. You want to go and see the specialist in that thing and that thing and that thing because that sets you up for the best quality of life. Yeah. And you only know how valuable your health is when you don't have it. It's so true. It's like, it's, it's like, you don't, you know, when you stub your toe, you don't think about your toes very much until you stub your toe and you're like, oh my God, my whole body is in pain right now because of that yeah. toe that I didn't even think about. Right. I like heard it. Yeah. Right. Like it's a simple metaphor, but it makes that like, it's, it tells the story, right. Of like, we don't value it until it's in pain. Yes. And the fact that it's in pain, go and see someone. Mm-hmm. So one of the best things I ever did with my exhaustion was going to see my homeopath and we did these really in-depth tests where I found out actually I was adrenally exhausted because my cortisol was fucking through the roof. Yeah. But I didn't know that. I thought it was my hormones, which seems to be the fallback for most women. It's just my hormones. Yeah. You know, this, oh, this happens every 28 days. Oh, this is just because I've had a baby. This is because my cycles. No, 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 no. There's more than just estrogen and progesterone. Mm. There's plenty of other things that influence how your body functions. So go and get the tests, go and get the assessments, go and find the people who can help you support your body so you can do your best work because Mm. you can't if so much energy is going just to keeping you standing upright in a day. Mm. So my number one is, okay, hang on a minute. This is not my vitalistic normal. I might have seasons of it, but if it's hanging around for a long time, this is not normal Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be my normal and I don't have to accept and tolerate that it is. Yeah, I love that. So what do I want to go and do about that? Who do I want to go and see? And, you know, for me, my TCM practitioner, acupuncture, herbs, she has been freaking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So she's now just built in. I see her every three weeks because I feel so much better when I do. So good. Support my body, move my energy channels, give me some herbs to tweak the things that aren't functioning quite right. And all of a sudden I'm so much more available for all of the other stuff I want to do because I'm not spending so much energy in the shit that I don't want to do. So go and get the help. Go and pay the expert to help your body. Go and do it. Mm. I don't want women to continue to just live with broken bodies. The hard part is, though, too, that for many women, particularly as we see, you know, rising inflation, <clears throat> they're going to be prioritizing expenditure on their children and not using the spare money or, you know, if there is any spare money on themselves. Yeah. Because we're taught not to, and it's always the last thing. And that's the struggle, too. Yes. Well, it does require you to meet your own judgments on the type of woman that is selfish Mm. and the type of woman that chooses herself, in adverted commas, over her children. So, yeah, it forces you to face that. But there is always a way. Mm. There always is. And it doesn't have to be an extraordinary amount of money. Mm. So, my money had my bucks, like a hundred bucks. And you could have the level of healthcare that I have with my TCM practitioner. Mm. And so so for some mothers that might mean, oh, okay, we might skip this, um, you know, extravagant holiday or we might skip this term of extracurriculars perhaps because I'm going to really prioritize my health. Or I'm not going to buy coffee out. Yeah. Uh, Or I'm not going to do, um, I don't know, breakfast's out I'm going to have a coffee instead I don't know um I always think it's worth doing assessment of where your money's going because you want to really know that it's going in alignment with your highest values and often what happens is we perceive we have no money but that's because we're not aware of where we're spending it Mm -hmm. so I do think it's also a complex issue on on that and finding the services that you can access there's no you could easily go to a bulk billing GP that charges you nothing to get tests Mm -hmm. Like you can start there. It doesn't have to be only allied health. There's ways to go on wait lists in public health systems for physios and for, I'm not, I'd like, I don't even know, you know, to get x-rays, to get an MRI, to like all of the body things. There's always a way. And at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be this huge deal. Mm -hmm. If you go, well, you know, I'd love to go and see Julie's TCM practitioner once every three weeks, but that's not my reality. 
but I could go and see her every 12 weeks. Do yeah. that. Yeah. That is better than not doing it. Mm. Absolutely. So go do it. My tip number two would be very much like Bridget's. I come back to basics, diet focus. Am I supplementing my body with what it needs? Which for me, my body always runs low on uh, zinc and magnesium. And I seem to burn those things up the best. So I always up my zinc and magnesium. I always take sleep herbs so that my quality of sleep is as good as it can be. So I'm always thinking about how do I maximize the depth of sleep that I'm getting so that whatever hours I'm getting, I'm getting the most restoration out of. Mm -hmm. So herbs that induce deeper sleep, huge magnesium that induces deeper sleep, like supportive um, uh, amino acids that induce deeper sleep. So I'm looking at that. And I always make sure in terms of functioning with my family that I keep dinner super freaking easy. What are the easiest one pot throw in the oven meals that I can make for this next two week period? Mm. I'm not interested in crazy meals that take me an hour and a half, two hours each night. Nope, this is 15 minutes. How can I get a meal on the table? What mm. does that need to look like for me to do that? So keep dinner easy, focus on the supplements that you need to support your body body and get into deeper sleep. Then my tip number three would be to take a big breath in, focus on relationship because how you feel in your relationship can often color a woman's entire world. Mm -hmm. So I can feel like all the other parts of my world are kind of together. I don't know why I'm feeling so shit except my relationship is really not fulfilling and feeling pretty horrid and dysfunctional. And so all of my world feels horrid and dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And the amount of energy I spend spinning my wheels on what's happening in my relationship and how do I fix it and getting resentful and then having huge fights and then repairs. And then it's all of this huge amount of energy and drama that colors my entire world and is exhausting. Mm -hmm. Your relationship should be a place of nourishment and restoration. And if it is not, then just like we investigate our body, start asking why. And who can help me support that just like I'm asking you to do with your body? Just because you want to be in relationship doesn't mean you're excellent at relationship. Just because you want to be in your human body doesn't mean you're excellent at knowing all the things about it. We don't need to make it mean anything. It doesn't need to mean anything about you or me or our intelligence or the choices that we've made or who we are as a human. It doesn't need to mean anything, like remove the attachments. It just gets to be, ah, oh, you know, this is really painful. I've got some shit I can learn here and I can be supported while I do that. So at the end of the day, my top three tips come back to how do I support this human body and heart of mine so that I can allow my soul to open. Mm. And on that last piece on relationship, I know that there's been studies that have shown that, you know, people who are in like long-term healthy relationships have stronger immune systems. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Because there's a co-regulatory like aspect to, you know, that kind of connected relationship that helps each immune system balance itself. Mm -hmm. Which is so interesting and it, made, it, made, it makes sense on a somatic level, but I thought it was really interesting research I don't know if it was the Gottman Institute or somebody like that that put it out yeah, so interesting. Um, but it just speaks to that health piece that you know there's in all areas of life we're either going to have illness or wellness yeah well you know really even wellness is a balance of illness and disease ultimately so what Isn't do we it? like what do we need to come back into wellness in each of these areas that feel you know out of integrity for me or out of alignment for me you know what can I put in there as supportive things to help me to thrive yes 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 mm. because when I'm exhausted the main person I lean on is my partner Nick mm. I lean on him to reflect back to me the things I need to hear to hold my body and what we have to get done when I really feel unable to to really acknowledge how hard it is or that it's okay to rest mm. like that is a place I go to for nourishment yeah and even just that permission yeah totally that you get then is like a breath of like spaciousness yeah mm. so we would love for you to keep this podcast saved somewhere so that when you find yourself in a season of exhaustion you get to come back here and remind yourself of 
options Mm -hmm. and pick the ones that feel most doable and in alignment for you. Yeah. So Bridgie, what have you got going on in the world, girlfriend? I am about to open up some very special three-month coaching I guess bundles as part of the reimagining motherhood membership so if there's something that you want to dive deeper on over three months and also be held in the container of reimagining motherhood then I really invite you to check out my website and find out more about that it's bridgetwood.life and what about you Jules? Well, I have just released on a, a couple's online workshop experience. So it's a whole year of your dates guided by me. So it's one date a month that we gather for online with everybody's cameras off. So it's a very private experience that you get to have as your own date in your own lounge room. Simply that it's 12 dates of deliciousness guided by me and practices and conversations and questions that you would otherwise not make the time for. So I'm asking you to do this and prioritize two hours in your entire month that's dedicated to the healthcare of your relationship and your intimacy together. Then in the third week, we have a coaching call in case anyone needs some tweaks and some help and some couples guidance. And twice a month, I will send reminder prompts and text messages to men and women, separate messages, just to help you keep the simmer bubbling along in the month. So if you're really ready for putting your relationship in a set it and forget it healthcare system, then that's what my online workshops for couples are. And you can find out more at julietenner.love. Such a beautiful offer. I'm so excited about it. Sound, I love that whole set and forget thing because yeah, like it's the same thing. It's like it needs some healthcare. It's yeah. like healthcare for your relationship. And it's not that what you have isn't great, but the more you don't prioritize it. Yeah. So I'm just saying, here's your thing. You book it, you turn up for it. I got you covered, boo. So yeah, go check that out. Love it. And we're Nourishing the Mother on Facebook and Instagram. Please reach out if you had podcast suggestions, if you want to ask us any questions. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. Thank you so much for listening. We literally couldn't do this without you. Please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively into your life, then head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And if you feel like giving back a little to this free content, please rate us on iTunes or Facebook, all of which helps the podcast reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul.